Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in again for our second book club. To those of you joining us for the first time, we're so happy you're here. A few quick reminders before we jump in. Your mics and your videos are turned off, but please send us your questions in the Q&A. Tell us what you're thinking in the chat and keep your eye out for some polls we're going to be launching throughout the event. Once again, we'll have some exciting giveaway news to share. More details on that at the end. And then before I pass things off to our panelists, I wanna thank everyone who helped make tonight's book club happen. Our small business partners were Noble Root Wine and Spirits and The Sweet Whisk. And of course, a huge thank you to our main event partner, Project Best Life. It's really so wonderful to work with them on these events. And with that, it is my pleasure to pass things off to our panelists and Project Best Life Ambassador, Sydney Perkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Although we've made great strides in fighting cancer and treating it overall as a disease, cancer in young adults is still on the rise. Roswell Park started Project Best Life to empower young people to take control of their lives and take tangible steps to live their best lives. While Project Best Life is connected to a cancer center, we do much more than cancer prevention. We take a holistic approach to wellness, including guidance for nutrition, fitness, staying healthy, and your mental health and overall well-being. So if you need help starting or restarting your wellness journey, please visit us at projectbestlife.org for blogs, podcasts, videos, and more. Follow us on social media and get back to living your best life. Thank you so much, Buffalo Magazine, for having us. Thank you so much, Sydney. Um, it's also my pleasure to introduce Danielle Osher, editor of Buffalo Magazine, and back once again as one of our panelists. Thanks, Emma. Uh, that is the voice you're hearing behind Buffalo Magazine, um, and she's done a lot of her work to make today happen. So thank you so much, Emma. Um, Sydney, I love that intro about reasons we wanted to start this book club when we talked about a partnership is you know, when we think about our happy, healthy lives and how we can take care of ourselves and our mental wellness, um, reading was really on top of the list for me. That is the thing that uh, gives my me a creative recharge, gives me space to be, and is also, if I'm not careful, the thing that very quickly falls off my to-do list. So mm -hmm. I love this book club because, you know, coming out of you know, as we head into the summer and we start doing more things, it's the one thing I really don't want to lose is regular reading. And so I love having this hour with all of you to talk about a book that honestly, I would not have chosen to read for myself, but I am I'm very glad to have read. Um, so as Emma said, I'm Danielle with Buffalo Magazine. Um, I'm joined by our two panelists from those of you who were here last time. Uh, we, we brought the gang back together and um, Tiffany, you want to turn on your camera here and introduce yourself quickly? Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, hi, Tiffany Woods. I'm with uh, Buffalo News and back for the second time for this amazing book club. I also would not have probably chosen this book if it had not been for um, our uh, poll. So I'm excited to get into it and talk with you guys today. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I have the book here and I'll be referencing it. So if you see me looking down, that is what I'm doing. Um, Same. <laughs> as, as we've all been hinting at, we did yeah. let the book, we let the book club pick this book and it was a really fun twist because it pushed us all out of, I think, some of our, our usuals. I'm curious if anybody else in the chat picked up this book for book club, but otherwise would not would have let this New York Times bestseller kind of slip past them. And I'm just gonna start with a really, really easy question, Sydney. I'd love to know what you thought of it. Oh my gosh. So I think similar to each of you, again, the first couple chapters were very hard to get through. Um, I feel like I needed some space in between, literally, because the chapters are so short, I felt like I was reading like one or to three pages and then putting the book down and then being like, wow, I just, cannot put myself in that mindset. But then as I got, again, for this book club, I got deeper into it. I was like, I'm grateful for this journey. I'm grateful to watch her, you know, live this life. And I felt like overall, it was a lot of like good wisdom with it, but at first it was rough. How about you, Tiffany? 
Yeah, I was just looking in the chat. I saw some folks saying uh, they enjoyed it. It was an uh, easy read. And Kitty said, definitely would not have picked this up on my own. Uh, same. I tend to go, I go for fiction a lot, but not like the kind of fantasy fiction. So I haven't really gotten into that in a while. Right before we started, we were talking about uh, what with Twilight and Harry Potter and things like that. But um, for the book overall, I was also mentioning, I did not see the end happening the way that it did. I had a different take on it. Like I thought that it was gonna go st really straight fantasy where like it goes into another life, but I kind of should have picked up on the fact that like it was really trying to have that kind of like moral compass. Like at the end, I felt like it was very easily kind of summed up to be like, even if you had other lives, like the one that you're living is like the best one. Like that, it, it felt very like trying to make a point um, so yeah, I'm excited to kind of like get into a little bit more specifics. I don't want to jump ahead because I could just like <laughs> talk about it for a while. Yeah. Um, like I, I chatted with a couple of people who I knew were reading the book beforehand and I, I got a couple of chapters in and if it were not for this book club, I think I would have put it down and, and never come back to it, which is a problem for me. I either can't put the book down or I give up on it really quickly and I'm glad I stuck through on it. Um, Tiffany, I'm kind of jealous you didn't see it coming because a couple chapters in, I was like, is this going to come full circle? And she's going to realize that she should be happy and get a new perspective on her life. And um, spoiler, yes. But I actually, to Sydney's point, I really liked the journey. I thought, I agree, it was a very easy read. I like the way that Matt writes. I thought it was really personal like it it put you in her headspace and you really felt like you got to know her and so you didn't have this like third party narrative that a lot a lot of books can have um and I thought with her little part of me sometimes through the book I was getting frustrated with her because it was like Nora can't you see the lessons right in front of your face like I'm reading it and I see it for you and so but I think that's part of good storytelling right is you get invested and you start to feel like the characters are are part of part of you and, and you're in it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, by the end, I was, I was really happy with how he wrapped it up. I thought I could have, you know, even if you know how it's going to end, and this is a really classic plot line, I thought he did a nice job of uh, exploring different elements as at the end. And then also kind of, I like that it didn't just end with her choosing that we got a little bit of the after effect. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, what spoke to you? This one's tricky because, you know, what's your favorite quote? I probably dog-eared about 20 pages. <laughs> and I know we shared some on social for those of you who had seen it, but um, I also thought it was interesting because I almost never pick a quote from the last page of the book, but in this case, I did. One of my, one of my favorite quotes was, you were never a pawn. You know, it's like the chess, the chess line that cuts through, and I thought it was such a nice mm -hmm. way when they're in person and she's she's been inspired to play chess with this old woman and reconnect and you know a woman that hasn't known her in decades has that little nugget of wisdom that so perfectly sums up the book so i, I thought that was a clever clever moment tiffany i put you on the spot what did you like yeah so i didn't so much i didn't find it super hard to get into i actually found a lot of it like i found myself being like oh that makes sense or kind of like relatable in the sense that like especially within the last year in getting like going through therapy i definitely noted a lot of like therapists like, kind mm -hmm. of like looking in words doing self-work um, the quote that I shared that was um, shared on Instagram as well from Buffalo Magazine was, it seems that you've spent all your life saying things that you aren't really thinking. And so this, I'm trying to remember, it was on page 155. I think that it was like, it was some time where she was basically saying that she was living her life. She was saying that she didn't want to go into a different life again and she was done. And uh, the librarian was like, no, that's not true. And then Nora was like, well, I guess not, but like this other thing and kind of trying to push her to think about what actually she wanted because in the finally she realized that it was like she was people pleasing like she wanted to live one life for her dad she wanted to live another one from her for her brother she wanted to, to um, do another one for um, the band and none of those were actually for her and even 
at the like with her with Molly and having Ash and the kid like the last one that she actually like wanted and realized was that final life and I thought a lot of the um notions about like putting yourself first and really being gentle and like giving yourself grace and trying to find the hope I think someone mentioned like it was about hope and like trying to get yourself through depression or like anxiety of those things I definitely appreciated those stances and when we got when I got to the end of the book I didn't do any research into the book other than like kind of reading the um bit when we did the poll is that his other like memoir was reasons to stay alive so I'm assuming that his like a lot of his work is about like kind of you know dealing with suicidal ideation or like I don't know, attempted suicide, because that is what starts the book off and gets you. And so it has a lot, a lot of those, I think, like therapy, like therapeutical, therapeutical, yeah, uh, notions within it. Absolutely. I agree. Um, I feel like for me, I had so many, like you said, Danielle, like so many quotes in this book that I could like say, but I really did like her talk when she was the Olympian, when she was like sharing that to everybody, how about how, um, and it's similar to what the uh, Mrs. Elm said at the end, how like life starts out with this trunk and you just have like maybe these three pieces or like with chess, you have these eight moves, but then from those eight moves come like all these other moves. And like, there's not necessarily the right choice. It's just like how you see the choice. Like someone said, like, it's not what you look at. It's like how you see it. And I feel like in this book, it was just interesting to see and I really like that chapter where she was going like in one life I was this in one life I was that she was like listing all of her lives and I was like that's to fight one person she had the passion to do all these things whether she found follow one decision or another and I also thought it was interesting that like regardless of it all you know what makes you you have to be happy with who you are like and I think that's what uh, Tiffany I kind of you know in the beginning I was kind of feeling like oh I, I really wished that that was true of the Midnight Library that she could just live this life and she could choose but then I was like if, I, then I was like okay yeah they're probably just gonna definitely just say that like nothing is better than what, what you are in nothing is better than what you have it's just your willpower so I feel like in that aspect I really loved her I really loved that speech because I think it was just it was true to that audience, I think, as the Olympics, because they're like, oh, this high achievement, you must be like, you must be, there's something that you must do right your entire life. And she's like, it's not, it's all an illusion, you know, it's just basically what you do and how you make it. I love that you picked that one too, because for me, right, the fact that it goes from her laundry list of all of the lives she lived, and if you look closely, they're all career focused. It's like, oh, I went to explore glaciers, I did, I did this, I did that, and then it subtly takes you to her takeaway being like, wait a second, a successful career or a different career that I'm passionate about like, is not the blanket solution to what she was searching for. It was more holistic than that. And I thought, you know, Tiffany, when you say there's little therapy nuggets throughout this, I totally picked up on that too. And that was one for me is like, remember it's, it's a balanced life that it brings you true happiness, not a Right. soul focus on, on one element or one thing that you think will will make you the person that you want to be. Um, ooh, we got a great quote in the chat um, that I also flagged. It's not the lives we regret not living. Ugh. It's not the lives we regret not living that are the real problem. It's the regret itself. Because I liked that little fantasy touch of like watching her regret about caring for the cat bolts disappear once she got a new perspective on that situation. I thought that was just like a really great reminder, um, which is an underlying theme in this book about perspective and the, and the way that you look at something and think of, and what your takeaway from that situation is. Yeah, the book of regrets was was interesting. I really liked, I think, such a visualized reader. Like I can kind of envision it um, when I'm reading that I like to kind of think about like what that looks like or when she was living her different lives um, with the library. And then to kind of like 
go off when she it also was kind of telling when at the end when the, the, mrs elm was telling her that like she needed to look for one book to like get out of there and she mentioned the book of regrets and mrs elm was like no that would be like the first one gone like you don't need to think about it that i felt like that was also just like such a small thing but it was just like reiterating and kind of like putting it into stone like that is in the past like you can't continuously like look towards the past and like the regrets that you made because you're just going to like keep yourself stagnant in that point and it was made even truer when she woke up and then like all, it was kind of that domino effect of the living in the past and focusing on like the arguments or like the things that were wrong was stopping her from like reaching out to her brother or like reaching out to um, her friend in Australia, where it seemed like every, also everyone else was kind of like looking for that olive branch and it made it be like, it wasn't just her that was struggling. Like, I think out of this, she realized that like pretty much everyone in her life at the time was struggling really bad and she couldn't see it just because like she was going through what she did. You know what it makes me think of for everyone who was here last time? Um, our first book. <laughs> And how Trish in her first book didn't basically became estranged from her family because of something that she perceived. And then when they actually communicated, realized that they had perceived a completely different scenario. She thought that they didn't want her there and they thought that she didn't want to be there. And I, I think it's interesting, right? We're trying to pick books that make us think about these things, that it's such a common thread that I think we all relate to, um, to have it come book over book I think is fun um in the other book oh Jody Jody beat me to it I was gonna say it's pride prejudice <laughs> and other flavors thank you a recommended read if you guys have not read it yet um but yeah it seems like from the chat too that the notion of regret is something that really resonates I think and with all of us and it's a I really liked the way he portrayed that in here and and played off of it I think you know, it was our first alternate life, but when she goes and experiences that pub life with Dan and then just like has her eyes open to the fact that he is not this wonderful mm -hmm. partner that she had remembered him to be. And she's looking at him with new eyes going like this, this is the life that I regretted. Like, oops. Mm -hmm. Um I just thought, and, and so immediately, right? She's not there for very long. It's almost instantaneous. She gets there. And it's like, wait a second, I had this all wrong. I think, you know, it's the rose colored glasses effect. Yeah, and so like, and I, I like, oh, sorry. I like the, the quote towards the end where, um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it was like happy, like, you know, happiness isn't in, like intrinsic to sadness. Like there is no like happiness without sadness. And like when she was talking to, I think it was her brother, the bandmate where he was like, she was like, do you still read philosophy? And he was like, I've read life and life is a philosophy. And you know, I feel like I'm at this point in my life where I'm like always trying to make good choices. Like I feel like as you know, young people you're trying, especially in Project Best Life, we're trying to live our best life. We're trying to make good choices that are supposedly gonna give us good outcomes. And that's why I picked that quote, you know, to share because I was like, you know, it's something that, you know, in life we do try to make these things, but we ultimately are gonna have regret. And it's no matter what, you're gonna have moments of sadness, but like no matter what sadness, the deepest sadness makes the best joys, you know, the, the most joyful. And I think that's where, that's why, you know, Nora can probably move forward in life in a better way because there is no darker spot than where she was, where she started this book where it literally she has chose now everything after that after she's experienced this life and met other people who are also sliders or trying to you know find this way she um she can there's no way up nowhere but up it makes me think of the the first quote i shared on um on buffalo magazine social about how you know those are the, the defining moments that give you the new thing for a kind of uh, challenge-free existence. And you think that that's the measure of what a happy, good life is. Um, unfortunately, you're going to end up like Nora in the beginning of the book and be a little bit off course in your expectation. And I think, you know, that's something that, at least for me, I, I learned not as a kid, but, you know, going through teens and early 20s, and you're like, wait a second. Um, 
it's not carefree and easy. It's how you handle the roadblocks and how you bounce back that ends up being what defines you. And one of the things I really, you know, once I got into it, really enjoyed about this book is how it kept putting the focus on your choice, right? There's so much we don't control. Um, you know, the, you control the choice, not the outcome. And then just, but kind of bringing it back around to the parts of it that are in your control and that you, you can, you can shape and you can change if you're not happy. I thought, and that really stayed with me. Yeah. yeah I really liked Sherry put in, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, a quote that, um, and she mentioned that it was an homage to A Wrinkle in Time, A Christmas Carol and a Wonderful Life, but she put in the quote, so let's be kind to the people in our own existence. Let's occasionally look up from the spot in which we are, because wherever we happen to be standing, the sky above goes on forever. And I feel like that was such a, that was definitely, I thought that I, I think I might have um, highlighted that one, but I definitely think that that kind of covers the whole like sentiment that we're supposed mm -hmm. to take and just like taking it taking everything the way it is and like one day at a time because I feel like we can just get so bogged down in um <clears throat> excuse me in the his in like the past and then there was a, a thing I uh highlighted from page 93 when she was like the award the olympian and she was giving her mm -hmm. ted talk and she's the direction um and i also felt like the po the focus on like stamina and kind of like going forward is like she kind of ran out of stamina like she got to that breaking point um before going into the midnight library and that was just like another kind of like nugget um, that I feel like he like put into the book of just like showing that like you kind of have to keep going because that's what life is like it's not always going to be perfect or like you're not always going to be happy like there are there like Sydney you mentioned in the other quote that like sad happiness comes with sadness because it's life. Mm -hmm. I love the connections that we're drawing in the chat here also shout out to Groundhog Day. <laughs> um, <laughs> And this is, you know, I thought that was a really interesting part of this book. This is a classic plot, um, you know, and when you choose to take on something that is, has been done many times and how you choose to approach it, I thought it showed Matt's creativity and also a little bit of fearlessness to say like, yep, uh-huh, this is, this is a approach that everybody knows about. I'm going to take inspiration. I'm going to pay homage where it's due and I'm going to make it my own as well. Um, and to Nicole's point, you like throw some physics in there. You know, we had quantum realms. We had some, we had some cool stuff. We had jumpers or, um, can't remember what, sorry. Sliders. They were not called jumpers. Sliders, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so it did, I felt like it had a little bit of, of something across genres, which I appreciated. Um, but I want to ask you to this question from Jessica, because I think it's awesome. Um, who would be your librarian and in what setting? Oh my gosh. I was literally thinking this, like when she, <laughs> when Hugo was going through, like his was a video store and someone was like, I was like with the restaurant, like, wouldn't you get full? Like, wouldn't I just be kind of torturous? But then I was like, um, so I think that mine would be just because I am a very spiritual person, spiritual in a sense, like I connect to religion very well. So I would like to think that I would be in a church and it'll probably be my grandmother, or probably my grandmother, like leading me, you know, cause she's always been a mentor. So probably like either at St. Luke's or hopefully some beautiful church and then just like going through different pews I think it'd be like literally different different views of the altar like where can you see you know life oh I love that how about you Tiffany uh, see I think that I was trying to like stay a step behind and not trying to get too like emotionally into it because I was getting a little choked <laughs> up uh, especially when she was with um the with Molly and was talking about just like having a mom and or being a mom it was like super um super emotional but I think if I had to um I think the one it might have been Similarly to the way that hers was like a teacher or well, a library guidance counselor from college um, who was super um, there for me when I went and like was out of state and had like issues with, not out of state, but out of um, town, like six hours away from family um, and really just kind of like regretting, like having some regrets about like choosing the college that I did and wanting to transfer and kind of like 
her relating with me and helping me like stick it out. So I think that that might be, that might be my librarian. She might be my librarian. Yeah. And you, Danielle? Oh gosh. Um, this is really embarrassing, but we'll be honest. Okay. Um, my library would be a candy store. That's like my supreme happy place. And all of the aisles would just be different kinds of sour candy. <laughs> um, I think the the who is such an such an interesting one because you know I love how for Nora it was somebody that was incredibly instrumental in her life but not a constant figure you know that notion that somebody can really make a huge impact in your life and only be there for a short period of time potentially um, and you know I think when I think to who, who my librarian would be I was lucky that right out of college my first job I had a great close friend and coworker who was 10 years older than me. And she had the wisdom that, you know, when you're young and fresh and sometimes you need that perspective dose, um, was really valuable. She's born, born and raised Boston, Massachusetts. So she's got a little bit of that no filter. Um, and I think it's really unique when you can find somebody that you connect with and you feel comfortable being really open to and who can be very blunt back, but in a, in a loving, respectful way. And so, you know, I think back on her, she's such an important mentor to me at a, at a time where I was like, full speed ahead, let's run in and like make this life exactly what I think it's going to be. And then you get faced with some, some harsh realities. <laughs> and then, you know, she really helped me figure out, you know, that important life lesson of like, which battles do you fight and, and keeping your perspective and, and keeping your drive, but balancing it with all the other things that matter, like balance and respect and being kind to people. So um, thanks, Jessica. That's a fun one. That was hard. Mm -hmm. I was trying to type this out, but I feel like it takes, it was like a more of a, a for me to write it out, but I was going to say, it's a really great question because I think it gives you so much to think about. And it is a heavy topic because it is about like being on the cusp of death, right? Um, and who that person or people would be, but that also I feel like all of us kind of immediately know who it will be. Like you kind of like, you're like, oh, like it'll take a lot. And then it kind of comes up just immediately. I feel like also kind of the way that um, when she's like thinking about the different, uh, her times of the regrets and things like that, you, they're in your back of your mind. But as soon as you have to like, you're asked that question, you can immediately kind of mm -hmm. think of the answer it comes to you because it is like we live our past in our bodies, like our bodies hold all of that uh, history yeah. in us that like we innately can just like remember at the top of a like at the drop of a dime. I'm giving out, I'm having yeah. so many corny analogies. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm, I'm it's my mom at this point. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. if it was raining, I'd be like, it's raining cats and dogs. You would have, you would, mm -hmm. I would be like, from the <laughs> office. Um, I also feel like now I should send this book to the person who I think would be my librarian and just, you know, like a, a nice little note and take that moment of gravi gratitude to be like, I, I hope you like this book, but also you're amazing and thank you. Because um, that was something when I finished it that I thought, you know, how lovely that they actually had her go back and, and find Miss Elm and play a game of chess with her in real life and realize that, that was a relationship that mattered to her and that when you find a person who is truly kind to you that that is somebody that you you keep close because it is not a, an everyday thing and it's um something to be cherished so yeah now I, now I feel I like think, I got a surprise her with a book <laughs> yes you hit on that I think that's I'm going to make that my homework assignment and if you guys all of us don't mind making that our homework assignment thanking our librarians and then also thanking that person who we thought would be our guy. Like, you know, like, you know, we're all talking about being kind and it's like, you know, clearly Nora felt like she was that kid's piano teacher. She was working at this music store. I'm sure many people did appreciate her in their life, but you know, no one took the time to say, but if all, you know, all of us did that, you know, how much kindness we bring into this week, this long weekend that we're all about to have, you know, we could all go into it that much more happy. Sydney, literally what you just said, I was thinking about that every time when she went back and the music store was closed, I was, and he was like, and the reason that she was fired is because he was like, we can't keep, like, have, we can't keep you on staff and people are just going to look at her sitting there with each time of that is saying that her presence in the store 
actually kept it thriving. Like people were exactly. actually coming back for her. And if people mm-hmm. had actually said that to her or and said that to the owner, right? That it would have also changed it. And in this moment, it's like telling the people that you care about, that you care about them or reaching out to someone in your past that really inspired you or left an effect on you because no one may have said that to them. Just like Mrs. Elm in the end saying that like, she wasn't the best wife. She wasn't the best. I don't know if she said mother, but like she wasn't the best person and she was expecting no one to come and visit her. And now like this student coming back, like how many years later to come and like play a game with her and just be a nice person. Like that would touch anyone, I think, and be that kind of like glimmer of hope or light to kind of like maybe take someone out of a dark time that they're having. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it could just be a, a word, like in a grocery store. Like you said, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be this big grand gesture of a letter or a note. It could just be a word of kindness. That's inspiring for sure. It makes me think of, um, not to, I, I will do this subtly and then we'll move on. A story that we did for Buffalo Magazine that really um, was inspired by something that matters to me, gratitude. And then I, I partnered with a writer on it who really made it her own. And it's one of the things I love about my work is you have an idea and you hand it off to another person who's very talented and they take that idea and run with it. And she shared a really personal story of how gratitude helped her overcome a miscarriage. And it really, and she started practicing gratitude in her daily life and it helped her find that perspective again and and come out of a dark time with the little reminders of the good in her every day. And in it, she had... Uh, uh, I don't know the exact quote, but it was basically that, you know, once she saw and intentionally went looking for one little thing, she saw them all around her. And that stayed with me since I read it because it's, it's such a powerful reminder. And, you know, going back to the, the things we control and the things that we don't, it's like when all of that happens, right, it's not only for ourselves, but for other people, it's, you know, taking a minute and and being there for somebody else is something to be grateful for and it is something to prioritize. Mm-hmm. So that, and um, I'll find that story shared in the link if you guys haven't read it, it's a, it's they a great share. piece. Oh, good. Thanks, Jody. That's our chat extraordinaire part of the Buffalo Mag- Magazine team. So hard assist on the chat. I appreciate that. You know what's interesting though? And it's, I'm officially a book club convert. This book was not my favorite. I really didn't like it when I started it, except for the fact that it was well-written and easy to read, which are like the number one deal breaker for me when reading a book. If it's hard to read through, I just won't do it. Um, But I stuck it out for this book club. I finished it and I was like, okay, you know, I have a lot of feelings about this book. I actually don't know if I liked it or if I didn't like it or if I liked parts of it or if I would recommend it to somebody. But, you know, now that we're, we're talking the three of us and all these great comments in the chat, it's like, it's making me think a lot. And I I appreciate that about the book and also about book club. It brings such a different, like for me, it makes the reading so much more than just finishing the book and going, okay, that's going back in the stack. Mm -hmm. Did you have a favorite life that Nora lived? a life that you wanted her to either pick or be informed by? It was hard for me. It's even hard for me to like, to get into that question. Cause I ultimately, every single time I was like, what is going to take her out? Like I was always wondering what is going to pop her out. And I was really interested in the fact that when she was in the, um, the Arctic, how she was like begging to get out with the polar bear. She's like, please take me out now. Take me, please, Miss Elm, Miss Elm. And she was like, no, she was like, you're gonna die. I feel like in that aspect, you know, I, I just knew I always was looking for the flaw in each of her lives. So I feel like in that aspect, I just, I couldn't even pick a favorite. I've, of course, me personally, I would have wanted her to choose the fame life, but the way she was living, it just seemed so hectic. It was so, it was just awful. You know, it just was not, what, it was not what it, it she thought, I, what I thought it would be. In the, so, um, no, I, I really can't. That's hard for me. What about you, yeah, I, I actually had that same thing where I kept being like, sometimes I try to outsmart the book. I was reading the chapter and I was like, I wonder what lesson this chapter is trying to teach us. Like, what is she going to learn from this one? Um, 
I did because it was that epiphany of being like, oh my God, this guy sucks. Like, why did I think that this was the biggest mistake of my life walking away from that wedding? Um, but in her rock star life, I found that really powerful. Like when she discovers what happened with her brother and that she spent so much time carrying around that guilt that she ruined his dream to live it and realize that it took him down a, a bad path and now she doesn't have him at all. I thought it was like one of the more like earthquake moments in the book for her own realizations. How about you, Tiffany? hopeless romantics in the chat that I just thought that the last life just seemed at like when it got to the point where she was saying that like she was kind of like going through the motions and she was starting to remember things that she hadn't so she was having that deja vu feeling where it was like oh she was actually like fitting into the life I felt like if she had continued on that path then she would have been doing exactly what Mrs. Elm said, which was that you would go into your life and you would just like forget that everything else happened. So I felt as if like she was also not letting herself fully be engaged in that life. So I felt as if it was like, it was the author, it was Matt trying to like make it so like she, either way she would return home. But there really wasn't anything in that life that she wouldn't have gone in. The only reason that she wasn't fully into Ash is because she was like she hadn't been dating him or like the only reason that Elm was because she was in the midnight library and the midnight library for me I felt like it wasn't supposed to so much be um affecting her life going forward it was supposed to like open up the options for it so I just felt like for me the ending like it won't they Matt wanted it to be like way too just like no strings attached, like everything just like perfectly wrapped up in a bow. And I feel like that existence could have been a good one for her because she didn't say yes, because she was in a relationship with Dan, who ended up being a complete creep and all that stuff. So like if she would have gone in that, she would have likely gone down that path. So that's, yeah, I would say that one. Not gonna lie. Uh, I was reading that last chapter and I was like, you know, as an early 30 something, it would be great if I could go to sleep, jump into a life where I've got a family and decide if I like it or not, and then jump back and help me make that choice. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I want to end up in the midnight library like she did, but it was one of those things where I was like, it is, it is really cool to explore the idea that you can try things on and, and see if they work for you without any sort of feeling of like, I can't undo, like life, right? You can't undo that choice. But in the Midnight Library, it gave her the freedom to really take risks without any issue. And I thought that was, that was cool. That one stuck with me too. Apparently I, I this just, book better than I thought. <laughs> okay, can I ask a clarifying question if anyone else felt this way? I thought that Mrs. Elm in the beginning said that she could not return to her life. I, did I misread it? Because I totally thought that that was the case. So when everything happens like that, I also felt very bamboozled because I was assuming that she would choose a life from the book because I felt like that was what the like that's what the author told me. So I was just like, okay, she can't go back to the life. So even though I was thinking that because she kept saying like, oh, I didn't earn this or like, oh, this isn't me. I'm like, well, girl, you're dead in the other life, so you can't go back to that. So that at that point, I was just like, okay, if this was the option all along, so is it that she couldn't go back or she technically didn't go back because she like wrote, it was after midnight and it was like some kind of like, she played the, the game, I guess, in that way. But oh. that kind of is what affects in my how I was reading the book like Daniel you said that you were trying to cheat the book I was trying to go with the flow that the book <laughs> was setting me up with <laughs> yeah it's a good lesson for me to be a little bit more in the moment I would thought it as I was reading it too I was like do you really need to guess or could you just go with it but that's a great question Tiffany because I feel like the whether or not they flat out said it I definitely think that's what the narrator was trying to imply and everyone in the chat is having different uh, interpretations of what was said. So I feel like, like, I feel obviously this book is meant to make us question everything. Like mm -hmm. nothing I think is really set 
in stone. That's actually a, another thing I love about this chat is, you know, how one piece of literature can mean very different things to all of us, um, you know, right on the scale of whether we enjoyed it or not, or the takeaways, which I'm doubt, or even how we interpreted the, the core setup. Um, but yeah, my gosh, do we think this would be a good movie? I feel so when um, when who um, I think when Sherry when you mentioned when she mentioned that it was an homage to um, a wrinkle in time I kind of thought like if it could have that kind of um, screen adaptation it could be cool it would be a it would be a darker version right like it would be so I think that that would actually be kind of cool to see like a little bit of a darker one because it is like she tries to uh, have like not be alive anymore you know so but I think it could be, if done well, it would need to be done very well and like very delicate in the terms of like how it talks about mental health and all those things. How about you? Sydney. Okay, I, I think I think I kind of, this is the one book actually I've met where I'm like, I kind of don't want to see it in a movie because I feel like you are, this is a journey. I feel like I did kind of journey along with her as hard and as painful and as like, crazy and chaotic as it was I feel like I did learn a lot in the sense that like you know I like that one quote where it's like you know live all these that want to be and one life you are these things so I feel like in that aspect I feel like the movie will kind of get away from the journey that we kind of get as a reader and going through popping in and out of these lives or her realizing that the choices that she might have made or the regrets that she might have had, you know, aren't technically regrets. You know, there's things that she, that she she just didn't understand or didn't. So I and I like also the fact that like when she when her when she came back out of the celebrity life where she was like, you didn't tell me my brother was gonna die. And she was like, Well, you're gonna die in one of your brother's lives. Do you think he's gonna be upset? So I think in that aspect, I feel like there's so many personal like you know things in this book that kind of like like you said that the author is trying to pull you through this um this fabrication that like life has to be a certain way and I feel like as a movie you we might get too caught up into Nora's story rather than how we are and how we are all you know going through our journey every single day it's a really interesting point I also love the question of like what if it was a theater production I was thinking like maybe it's an HBO mm -hmm. mini series, <laughs> um, but it is. It's tricky because you're right. You you have to keep some of his intimacy. Like I think he makes Nora and that dynamic with the reader really intimate. Everything yeah. is like stream of consciousness, so it would have to. You would have to kind of think of like, would it just be all voiceover? Like, what would that look like? Not all, but you know, there are a lot of parts with, with within the lives that she's doing, like when she's thinking of like, cause when she's com completely confused and going on. And so would it be like her talking to Ash and then like having those ways of thinking, obviously screenwriters can write it a lot better, but that would definitely be a little bit harder, especially if it was a, um, a stage production, I think. Yeah. It'll be um, interesting. Jen Jen put something in the chat that I totally agree with. You know, we're talking about the ending. Was it was it predictable? Did you see it coming? You know, Jen said, yes, predictable, but nonetheless satisfying. And I agree with that. And I think it's the mark of an excellent writer because it's not easy to, to have it play out exactly how you think it is. And yet it is still, it gives you what you want and more. And so, you know, for me, I thought that those those chapters after she woke up and she was making new choices based off of everything that she had just experienced, I, I found those really satisfying to say like, you know, think back to the Nora we met at the beginning of the book and, and to where she is now. And she's like, maybe I'll, you know, maybe I will go talk to Ash, but like she doesn't run over and talk to him like he's the solution to all of her problems. She's just like, mental note, that's, that's going to be coming. And then when you know, she just said about like, you know, I, I do this and I, and then I volunteer here and I want to come play chess with you. It's like, you know, she did that 180 and was far more intentional with every little choice she was making. 
And that's something that they bring up a lot is like, it's not the big things, it's the small things. And so I thought that bringing that back around and then reinforcing it by, by saying she's not, she's not making necessarily the immediate choices you would think she is, but you can see all of the lessons playing out was a nice, nice way to end the book. Yeah, I thought that it was interesting how they set that situation with the neighbor to be like someone that was really important and then he basically saves her life because I was like okay but who is this guy like I was like I understand that she kind of helped him a little bit but like why was he so important but again the like little things of like the because she was nice to him and they had that relationship when that happened he was the one that she could go to in the middle of the night and um get he, he would save her full circle moment All right. Any any final thoughts for our group? I can't believe it. Uh, we got just a few minutes left. Um, do you want them to write a sequel? Do you want to read more from this author? I feel like this for this book, it kind of now it would just be about her regular life, unless it was something like, what if like uh, the guy that can't Hugo came back and like slid into her life. That would be interesting. Um, also something that we were talking about in the chat of the fact that um, the sliders, I was hoping that she would be able to like meet more people that were like them. So that it could be like a, a sequel, but not about her. It would be like mm -hmm. about another slider. That would be cool. Or about Hugo. I would read that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, yeah, I love that um, about Catherine said about reading Hugo's story, how he said he had like 300 different lives and he was in this one life for five days and he like was easy to pick up and he's like met all these different people. I think that would be interesting to see. And then I would just like to see, um, hopefully in Hugo's story, learning all these different, like what is the ultimate goal of this in my library? Cause I did like the question of like, who is this librarian? Is it our conscience? Is it God? Who is this person? So I feel like that book will kind of get more into it. Like what is the purpose of going through this midnight library, especially if you're just gonna go back to your same life. Yeah, I actually think that's a brilliant idea. And now we should just lobby Matt to write a book, <laughs> continue this series, write a book about Hugo. We've um, already got your idea for you. You don't even have to do more. <laughs> you just have to write it. We just have, we'll just give it to you. <laughs> exactly. Had anybody, has anybody on here read anything else from him? I, I had it and he wasn't actually on my radar at all until this book came out. But I did notice that on the back, one of my favorite writers, Neil Gaiman, gave him a gave him a quote. Um, and so before I even read it, I was like, "Well, that's a good sign because if Neil Gaiman likes his writing, I I bet I will too." So yes, and great point, Lisa. Shout out to Dog Ear Bookstores. Um, that is where they hooked us up. We were at South Buffalo Bookstore. Um, and they have been a great partner for this book club from the beginning. So, you know, as you continue to read along with us every other month, we encourage you to go stop by book years to get your copy. Um, and then if you're lucky, you can sometimes get a free book and a tote bag if you're one of the first people to show up. Yes. Love the local um, bookstore love, same Jody. Mm -hmm. What is the next book? That's a great question. We don't want to choose it. So we wanted to open it up. Um, in the chat, there's a post event survey and you can also find us in our private Facebook group or email us anytime. We want all your book recommendations. That is how we are going to pick the next book in the next week so we all have time to read it. Um, and then what we'll also do is start sharing out a list. Uh, we've got a lot of great recommendations so far. Obviously we can only read one, <laughs> um, but we will also share all the recommendations that didn't make the book pick. Um, I know it was hard when we were picking this book to, we had it, um, Tiffany, Sydney, and I had the hard job of like bracketing it down. We had all the recommendations, picked a top three, and then what consensus, take it away. And I, I'm very grateful for that process because it introduced me to a new writer. And so I want to keep that thread going. Yeah. yeah and I us. actually, oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw Arcadia, yes, love the idea of throwback book recommendations. Um, they don't always have to be new. They can be a book that you love reading or that you think everybody you know should read. Um, I'm guilty of that. I will buy the same book for multiple people and be like, you might have never heard about this, but you're going to love it. <laughs> so 
Um, and plus it has the benefit of being a little bit easier for us all to get our hands on. Oh, final thoughts on the Midnight Library. This one's silly, but it's just a beautiful book. I mean, and I, it was having, when... <laughs> yeah, having finished it and then you take the dust jacket off and you're like, this, this kind of fits, fits the vibe. Um, I still love holding a book in my hands, so I don't take that for granted. Um, I just, it is, sorry, no, it's okay. It's on, to, I'm on my, uh, I am so, I'm getting used to still the, um, the lagging of Zoom because now I've been using Microsoft Teams. So I'm like, which, how is it? So sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh no, I love Teams too. Yeah, no, but I was just, I loved the, I thought it was so pretty as well. I literally take the paper off because I'm like, I don't want to ruin it. I want to just look perfect on my show for mm -hmm. forever. Um, but I think my final thoughts in the book is that, yeah, I think in general, it was a beautiful book. It was, it was hard and it was difficult, but I think that's life. I think that's a life for a lot of people. And I feel like, you know, Nora was a difficult life. And sometimes we don't always thrust ourselves into the lives of someone who's struck struggling or suffering like that but we were able to thrust ourselves into the lives of Nora and I think it gives us a lot of empathy for others who are struggling or suffering and if they just are at the end of their rope we understand that you know it's a legitimate decision because that was awful for her it was hard it was hard for us to go through those first couple of pages imagine living it so I mean like you know I think in that aspect it was a beautiful book and I do I'm grateful for reading it yeah um, again, I was going to try to type something in, but I feel like I could just say it um, in regards to the question about if it made us think about our other lives. And I was like, it did. It also made me think of that, like, it's never too late to kind of like try something new or turn things around, like at the end, nor is like doing the um, offering piano lessons and like going into that. Um, but yeah, I really did like this book. I would definitely recommend it. I didn't answer that question earlier um, when you asked. I think that Again, it gives a lot of that kind of like introspective, like thought, the therapeutic talk that like you get within like going to see a therapist or like having that kind of person. So I feel like it is, especially right now, there's so much burnout. There's so much of like people being unemployed, like having a lot of just like maybe regrets or just like feeling kind of bogged down by 2020 and like what we've been going through that this, I think is like, it kind of answers that question of like, it can be worse, you know, and that it doesn't, you don't have to um, settle for what you're doing now. Like you, there is hope that you can turn it around and make one small change that can like change your life and make it for the better. So um, yeah, I would, yeah. I, I approve. I'm glad that we read this book together and we're too. able to discuss it. And I agree with, I'm seeing a lot of things in the chat about, you know, thinking about our alternate lives. For me, it was a nice reminder um, to not worry so much, right? And, and to let go of those regrets and that no, if I'd made a different choice, it wasn't going to be this perfect dream life. Um, you know, I was lucky I did try on a couple of things. So I feel like I, I lived, um, made some risky choices. It was like, okay, it's fun for a while. No, okay, that doesn't work. I'm going to make a new choice. But you know, it's always tempting sometimes to look back and say what if and I thought that this book was for me a nice reminder that that's not really a good place to spend your energy instead look forward and think what if and so that is my true takeaway from this book um, and I'm incredibly grateful for both of you for such a, a thought-provoking chat and helping me see this book in in even more interesting light and for all of you in the chat um I love, I love it. Not only because it gives me early AOL vibes of, of chat rooms and when they were just really good, healthy, fun, constructive places to be and meet people. Um, so thank you all for the great, great vibes, really interesting insights, sharing with all of us. Um, love if we do a throwback. Sorry, if we do a throwback yeah. book, can we just do it on AIM? We just, no one gets on video. We just fully talk in the chat. It's everyone is just like, it's AIM. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, day. yes, because unlike you, Tiffany, I cannot manage to multitask um, having this conversation and typing in the chat, but I do love that idea. And um, please shower us with book recommendations. We're not kidding. We genuinely want them. Um, and they, yeah, and like I said, we'll be sure to share them all because I know summer reading is upon us and we'll maybe, you know, 
when our next book club comes, we'll be doing this out on our front porches in beautiful Buffalo weather. Um, also, a quick teaser, in your post-event survey, we want to know if you're interested in, now that a lot of us are vaccinated and can safely be together again, not doing book club in person, because it's really nice doing it virtually, but doing a book club happy hour where we can all put chat room names to faces. So please respond in the, in the survey. Let us know if you'd be interested in that, because you know we always love to share a cocktail with new friends. That would be so fun. Yeah, Emma, I'm gonna hand it back to you because I know you have a few final thoughts for our wonderful group here. Yes, so we have some awesome giveaways from our partners. You can see them here on the screen. Some great photos included. Um, and then just to close it off, I wanna say thank you again so much to everyone who joined us. You guys all make this book club so much fun to be a part of with the chat and your thoughts. So um, thank you so much. Danielle, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Just that I'm ecstatic. It's still light out. <laughs> and that I hope you all have a great rest of your night. I'm going to go take advantage of the fact it's not freezing cold. Walk my dog. And Kelly, yay, you can celebrate your birthday with us. Oh, my God, Tiffany, too. Mine, too. July 29th. Hey, girl. All right. That feels <laughs> like fate. We'll make sure we pick. We'll pick a good, we'll pick a good read that we can all celebrate with. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate every one of you. Have a great rest of your night. And we will see you in two months.